Hi, this is Mike. I'm going to create a series of videos, short videos, that will allow us to eventually install uh, an instance of Moodle on a Linux server. The videos will be short and fairly quick, so you'll, you'll see the step-by-step -step process, but I won't be able to drill down into each command and give an exhaustive you know, dissertation on each thing. I just, that's not the intent of these videos. The, the intent of the videos is simply to give you a roadmap and some ideas. So with that in mind, that we're, here I am on, uh, we have an account on DigitalOcean, and I'm just going to go through a couple, of, a couple of the first videos. I'm just going to touch on some features in DigitalOcean, and I know that a lot of this is really basic. So with that in mind, let's, let's go ahead and create a droplet. First thing that's required is the server needs a name. Since this is a development server, we're just going to choose the very minimal, the, the least expensive server that DigitalOcean offers, which is $5 a month. In terms of the data center, center regions, we're just going to select San Francisco. No particular reason other than it's in the United States and it's close physically. In terms of operating systems, we're going to select CentOS. It's very closely related to Red Hat. A lot of the commands that you use and Red Hat are used in CentOS, so there's a good crossover there. The operating version will select the latest and greatest 64-bit. As I said, I don't know everything about uh, either all the commands that are in Linux or everything about DigitalOcean, so what it means to enable virtual I.O. exactly, I'm not sure. You have to look that up. Once you've created an account or, or you make any kind of modifications to, to your root password, uh, DigitalOcean will send an email to your to the account associated with this DigitalOcean account. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and just create this droplet. Okay, now that we have the droplet created, we'll just end this video right here. The next video, we'll talk a little bit about some of the functionality that's associated with DigitalOcean, and we'll go from there. So uh, this is the end of this particular video. We'll talk to you later.